What's up guys, Johnny here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I brought myself out to the park because I want to answer a question that I've been kind of wondering about. Um, and that's related to my real ACC, real AC, real ACC, I don't know, I call it the real AC X210 build. Um, so if you guys have been following my channel, you've probably seen that real AC X210 build that I did. Um, it's a kit from Banggood, cost me $120 for the parts that come with it. Um, so I was asking the question, what if I spent a little bit more, use the same frame, but just a little bit more expensive components, will I notice a difference? Will it perform differently? Um, will it be a difference in power? How will it work? So due to some sales that are out there, I decided to pick up some new Emacs RS2205 S2600 kV motors. Um, and I also picked up some 30 amp Acon ESCs. So if you remember from that build, it was running uh, Racer Star 2205 2600 kV motors and Racer Star 30 amp ESCs. And that combination was running D-Shot 600. So I decided I want to do something a little bit more expensive, a little bit more high end, but the same basic capabilities. So for this build, I decided to get the Emacs RS2205 S2600 kV motors, the Acon 30 amp ESCs running D-Shot 600, and for the flight controller, I went with the DYS F4 uh, flight controller. Um, that's the new omnibus-based all-in-one PDB and flight controller. I chose that flight controller because the real ACC build actually uses an F4 flight controller, the CC3D Revo. So I wanted to make sure I found another thing that was also an F4 board. Um, this particular board looked really compelling to me. I have to say, putting it together was amazing. It was really, really straightforward, really simple. It definitely cut down on the weight. Um, it was probably the easiest overall build solder job I've had to do lately with the build, and I just really liked it. So hopefully it flies as well as it was to build, and that's what we're gonna find out today. So if you look at them, the two frames look almost identical. I have GoPro mounts on both of them. I'm gonna go ahead and fly both here. I should also mention that while the, the build from Benga does not come, with a camera or VTX. I'm using the same VTX on both, which is the AKK adjustable 25, 200, 600 milliwatt video transmitter uh, that I bought off Amazon. And this time I'm actually using the Monster V2 um, camera, which I'm really excited to check out. So this is my first time with it. I had the thing on order for about three months. It finally showed up, so it's time to check it out and see how it does. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and fly the old original X210 with the Racer Star motors, and then I'm gonna fly the ones with the Emax. Um, roughly the builds, I think it was $119 to order the, the kit from Banggood for the X210 Pro. And put all together for the same level components here, I think I'm looking at about uh, $200 or $210. So about a $90 difference between the two builds. Um, let's see what you get for $90. Does it make sense? You know, I'm really curious to check it out. Let's find out today. Let's go. <laughs>
that was the X210 real AC package from Banggood. Um, I really think that thing's a bargain. It flies great at a pretty low price. I really enjoy it. Um, but now it's time to check out that other build. Now, this is the stock tune. I have not tuned it yet. I did a basic cover test to make sure nothing was crazy, got the orientations right, um, but I've done no tuning, no flying. So here at the park, we're gonna see how does the new build fly? Is it a big difference? Is it smoother? Is it about the same? What do I get for that 90 bucks? Let's check it out. Well, that was actually kind of interesting. So that was my very first flight with the new X210 build. And one thing I can say is there's a lot more power at these motors. Um, I think it's a difference in the motor. I know they have the the curve, the arc magnets. I think that's contributing to that power. Um, it felt smooth. One thing I did notice though is this one does not have an LC filter for the for the video power. The other one does, and there's a huge difference in the amount of feedback I'm getting in that video. So one upgrade I'll definitely have to do is adding my own LC filter. There is not one built into the DOIS board like there is on the PDB that comes with the regular X210 build. So so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's definitely going to take some getting used to. That power just felt different. It didn't fly the same as I'm used to because I've flown that other build a lot. Um, but I'm just going to fly a bunch more packs here, get used to it, and see how it goes. Um, definitely more power. I notice when I do that punch out in the sky, it just goes. And it just hangs up there. And I think that's because of the motors and the power is being delivered. I'm running the same props. I'm running the same batteries. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. So time to rip some more packs. All right, so what's what's the verdict, right? I ended up switching back to the X210, or sorry, it's kind of hard when they're both X210s, but I wound up switching back to the Racer Star Motor one at the end just to make sure I was understanding what was going on. And one thing is clear is the power difference is massive. Um, I know that Racer Star makes some arc magnet versions. Maybe that would give you the same sort of performance on the Racer Star side, um, but these Emax motors perform great. Um, definitely running a lower D value. It's real smooth, not seeing a lot of prop wash. It's actually really windy out here today too, and it was putting up really well. Um, I definitely did have to tune the Emax build though. So I went through, played with it a little bit. It wasn't a perfect tune, but it's kind of quick and dirty. And it made a big difference. It also seems I didn't save my custom rates, um, and that's why things weren't quite right. So tricks like my muscle memory is just off until I can get it set correctly. Um, and that's one thing that's really awesome by having that DYS F4 flight controller with the built-in OSD. I was able to do that out in the field. I don't have a computer with me. Just type it in and do it. I love that feature. Um, you can definitely get it in some cheaper options. I do have a uh, Omnibus F3 in my other build and that has that same feature. And I think I paid $23 for that one. So you don't need the DOIS build to do it, but man, was it nice to have. And once I got a little bit more dialed in, it felt so much better, right? I noticed that what was happening is when I do a roll, it would snap back on me. And I think what was going on is the P wasn't quite high enough. So my I values are getting very large. And then the I values basically counter correcting at the end of that spin. So by decreasing the I just a little bit, but really increasing that P, I was able to get my rolls a lot more crisp. It's still not perfect, but with more time, I'll get that tuned. Um, long story short, I really like that new build. Um, just that power is just really awesome. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it on the scales. We're gonna compare the weights. I think these are both pretty light uh, builds. And then I'm gonna compare it to my RS2306 
build, see how the weights compare and then how that power compares. I think this one might actually have more thrust, more hang time uh, than the other one just because of the weight, but we'll definitely check that out in another video. Um, bottom line guys, I love to be back here building stuff. I love building new quads. I love flying. I love experiencing uh, different things, testing things out and these Emax RS2205 uh, motors are definitely really impressive, the, uh, the S model that is. And I know they've been out for probably five, six months, but this is my first build with them and I definitely enjoyed them. Um, so to me, that $90, it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, it takes more getting used to. It's not quite as easy for me to fly around just because I got used to the other with a little bit less power, but I'm sure I'll learn and get used to that. Uh, the other thing too is the Monster V2 camera comes with a 2.5 millimeter lens by default and I was having a hard time flying with that. When I got going at a good clip, I was really looking down at the ground and I'm running with almost 45 degrees of tilt. So um, I definitely prefer the 2.3 on the other builds or even a 2.1 that I've had before. Um, but you know, maybe I'll swap out the lens or maybe I'll just increase that tilt a little bit. Uh, we'll see, we'll play with it and we'll see what works out. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed that little bit. Definitely like building with a little bit more higher quality items. Definitely seem to notice the difference. Definitely had less prop wash oscillations. I didn't have the same desync issues with my ESCs that I had with the other build until I increased that mint throttle. So overall, it definitely seems like it performed a little bit better, more power, and that $90 definitely paid for itself. It definitely got something out of it. And uh, I definitely like this build. Can't wait to fly some more with it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.